In this video, I'm going to be discussing direct information we have regarding competitive Pokemon for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. There will not be any spoilers in terms of new Pokemon or showing anything that hasn't been officially revealed, except I will be discussing new information we have from leaks uh, in terms of things that are going to change up the competitive scene drastically for both singles and VGC. So of course with my channel being based mostly around competitive Pokemon, Pokemon battling, this is something I'm super excited about every time a new game comes around. So I wanted to hop on a video, kind of discuss some of the things that we have uh, received in terms of information. Um, of course, all of this is subject to change. I'm not sure if this is all 100% confirmed. It's basically um, it kind of set in stone at this point. So I feel like we can kind of talk about it and see how it's going to change up uh, kind of the landscape of Pokemon battling in general. So if you don't want to know about certain changes, whether it's Pokemon abilities, moves, things that have been deleted, new abilities, new moves, uh, I would recommend not watching this video. However, this is something I'm interested in and I don't think it's direct spoilers to the gameplay or story or new Pokemon or anything like that. So just going to kind of discuss it a little bit about it today. Now, of course, the first big mechanic that is going to completely change competitive Pokemon is Terra types. Now that is obviously uh, the new gimmick. It's been shown over and over again through trailers. And in my opinion, as of now, it seems like it's going to be one of the most overpowered, relatively unbalanced mechanics that Pokemon has given us. Um, with each Pokemon having the ability to change Terra types to whatever type you would like, it's going to open the door for... A lot more a lot more trickery going on. You're going to need to basically be on your toes for any Pokemon being able to change type. Um, of course, there's certain Pokemon that benefit from being changed to another type. Um, you can completely catch people off guard. But one thing we do know now is that you can actually change any Pokemon you want into any Terra type. Meaning, uh, in the past, we pre previously thought that you could only obtain certain Pokemon that could change to certain types. Like, for example, they announced... The fact that they're going to uh, do a Charizard raid that is going to be pure dragon type. Um, so I believe access to the post game is going to allow you to buy certain items that can change the Terra type to pretty much whatever you want it to be. So I think this is extremely wild. It's going to be almost worse than Z-moves in that you never know which Pokemon is going to just switch up completely. You're not going to have a matchup and it's going to it's gonna really kind of throw things upside down. So Terra types, being able to change anything to whatever type, I'm not sure how this is going to play out in terms of Smogon, probably going to be likely banned. Uh, VGC, of course, this is going to be an absolute game changer, in my opinion. Could be better than Dynamax, um, because of course, you know, Dynamax only lasting a few turns. But Terra types, about OP as hell, and I think that's pretty crazy. But not a whole lot new there, and then obviously Terra types have been officially revealed, but now we just know that you have access to change whatever you would like to whatever you would like. But one of the bigger leaks that has recently come out is the nerf to recovery move. So it seems like Game Freak is trying to push toward a faster playstyle, um, where originally moves like recover, roost, recovery moves like that have access to 16 PP. However, now they have nerfed that down to five. So this is going to completely change the landscape of stall tactics. Moves that get, get access to recover can only use them five times, and I believe that is PP maxed. Maybe it pushes it up to eight actually. Um, but this is actually huge. Stall has been a problem for years. Um, it's obviously a very viable uh, competitive strategy. And now with the Pokemon basically getting that cut in half, it's going to really limit that. Of course, also, it's also been revealed that the 20 minute battle timer is back. Uh, Game Freak does not want to give us access to custom battle modes, meaning you have to basically play uh, within 20 minutes. This, in my opinion, is likely due to them wanting to just push um, for like the um, the official modes where it's VGC or just the 3v3 singles. So six versus six singles. It does suffer from this a little bit. However, with the limited uh, access to recovery, it's going to make games go at least a little bit faster and kind of push toward more of an offensive meta, which in my opinion isn't a bad thing. We actually did see... Um, in an official announcement, the Pokemon Grafii had access to the move Rest, uh, which is PP actually was cut, but we basically now know that that is going to be a cut to all recovery moves. So it's honestly pretty huge. So if you're looking to run stall teams, you're going to have to deal with both the 20 minute timer and having half access to moves like Soft Boiled Recovered, pretty much any recovery move. Which, honestly, I'm fine with this change. I'm all for moving the pace of battles forward, and uh, I think it's, it's not a horrible thing. It's just a big change. Speaking of big changes, this is one where I don't know how I feel about this. So essentially Scald has been nerfed. The water move with the chance to burn has only been limited to the Pokemon Volcanion. 
The water fire type mythical is the only Pokemon that has access to this move, which in hindsight, it makes sense, but this is really going to affect the way defensive teams play, especially bulky water type Pokemon not being able to get that high burn chance on switch-ins is going to really limit the defensive uh, playstyle of a lot of different teams. Pokemon like Quagsire, anything with access to Scald, we know that things like Raikou grabbed it last generation, does not get it any longer. Um, so I'm feeling like water type Pokemon in general have now been nerfed. Um, and this does actually give a pretty solid buff to physical attackers in general. We know that you know, special attackers have always kind of had the upper hand, especially with Scald running super rampant in uh, especially singles. This doesn't affect VGC as much, uh, but with that super high burn chance, it's always really nice to get when you're the one running it. However, I, I do feel kind of indifferent about it because getting Scald burnt can kind of stop sweeps. It can really ruin uh, a lot of physical sweeps, and it really... it it. It limits luck a little bit to the point where now I feel like you're not relying on clicking Scald and just hoping for burns. So I think in any way that they can limit kind of RNG to push a battle in a specific way is good. Um, but you kind of hate to see the certain Pokemon that really enjoy Scald really lose that. Basically all water types, specifically bulky defensive water type Pokemon are now gonna have to go back to the days of Surf. Maybe we get access to something new that fills the place of this. Um, but in my opinion, yeah, I don't really know how to feel about this. Let me know how you feel about Scald being gone. We don't know if this is 100% confirmed, um, but we do know it's pretty close to being uh, pretty, pretty much official. So Scald is gone and the hot water is no longer. Scald, however, is not the only move that has been Thanos snapped out of existence. We have a whole extensive list of other moves that will not be returning to Generation 9. Let's talk a little bit about what we're missing here. So, we're missing Submission, Hyper Fang, Mind Reader, Vital Throw, Hail, Nature Power, Magic Coat, Revenge, Refresh, Grudge, Tail Glow, Aromatherapy, Doom Desire, Psycho Boost, Psycho Shift, Heart Swap, Autotomize, Dual Chop, Leaf Tornado, Mat Block, and Crafty Shield. So, a lot of these are kind of situational moves that aren't used all that often so in my opinion a lot of these aren't that big of a deal however one of the ones that we actually did not get listed here and that was confirmed a little bit later was power up punch now if power up punch is gone that is a huge l for certain pokemon that rely on that move it's not it, it's also pretty niche but power up punch was a move when introduced kind of changed the way certain pokemon play um so that's a, a plus one attack boosting move that certain fighting types are not going to get access to anymore um, but some other big ones on this list that I am mainly worried about is things like Tail Glow. What the hell? I mean, obviously, if certain Pokemon like Volbeat or Manaphy, things like that, aren't in the game in, in the first place, it makes sense as to why this move is gone. But uh, that's kind of a signature move that made you know the Pokemon that get access to it viable. Um, but it is a pretty overpowered move that when it was used, obviously, the sweep was inevitable, and it's kind of just one of those game-changing moves. Um, another one is something like Aromatherapy, being able to remove all the status conditions on your entire team is something that is replaceable with moves like Heal Bell. Um, so there is alternatives, but kind of strange they would get rid of the aromather Aromatherapy. Um, there's moves like Psycho Boost and Psycho Shift, which are super situational that nothing really took advantage of. Autotomize is a move I can only really think of like something like Agron being able to take advantage of. Um, but in general, interesting to see the moves that we are missing here. None of these I don't think are going to affect the meta too much, but interesting to know that these are no longer going to be with us. Um, so while we're losing moves, of course there is a plethora of new moves that we're getting access to that we have never seen before. Brand new, these are all leaked. Um, and I have access to just a few of them. I'm sure there's plenty that we're not going to talk about today, but there is some that I would like to at least touch on and kind of speculate a little bit. The first one comes in the form of Hazard Control, which singles players are going to love. It's called Tidy Up. This user tidies up and removes the effects of Spikes, Stealth Rock, Sticky Web, Toxic Spikes, and Substitute. This also boosts the user's attack and speed stats. So in Generation 6, we actually got the buff to Defog, which allowed to... Uh, remove hazards and since then hazards have still been really uh, prevalent in singles meta this isn't going to affect vgc as much uh, but the ability to punish switching in singles has always been something you know that is super huge for the meta um, and now with access to a whole new removal this is going to absolutely change the game kind of depending on which Pokemon are going to learn this. Maybe it's a signature move from only a few Pokemon. Maybe it's going to give access to certain Pokemon that could rabbit spin in the first place. Um, but Tidy Up is basically a better version of all hazard control. They also buffed um, rapid spin in their last few gens where you now get a plus one speed boost when you use it. But with Tidy Up, you get both the attack 
and speed boost, which is insane. So this can not only be used as like a setup move, but also to get rid of hazard. So going to be interesting to see if we even see hazard staying around too much, if they're going to be uh, as useful as they once were. Um, but this is also interesting because it does allow you to remove substitute, which was also highlighted here, uh, which is something that maybe they're... Maybe they're focusing on because Substitute is a little bit more prevalent now in Scarlet and Violet with things we've seen um, like Shed Tail. Shed Tail is a brand new move that we have seen officially released, um, which basically creates a substitute by cutting the user's HP in half, then switches the user out. So both a substitute and a baton pass. So maybe things like this are in order to try to keep Substitute in balance a little bit more. Just interesting to see that it does also... Um, tidy up the substitute as well. So I'm thinking this is super good. Um, it could be overpowered, could be literally used as just a speed, uh, <laughs> as a buff move, um, but super cool. Another new move we have seen is a ground type close combat. So we don't have too much official information about this. However, we do know uh, that it's going to be a, I believe, 120 base power physical ground type move that drops your special defense and defense. So um, stronger earthquake with the repercussion of running your defenses down. We don't have too much information about this, but I have heard about it. And it is something that is going to change up uh, the ground types, which are already huge in the meta uh, anyway. But is it going to be worth running over earthquake to you know mess with that special defense and defense drop? In my opinion, probably not, unless there's more information about this move that we haven't heard of yet. Figured I would just mention ground type close combat. That's kind of neat. Uh, but this next one is interesting. It's called Doodle. So we do have uh, full information about this where the user captures the very essence of the target in a sketch. This changes the abilities of the user and its ally Pokemon to that of the target. So that is a move that I can see. Obviously, this is a, a huge game changer for VGC. Um, being able to change abilities with the use, uh, of the user and its ally Pokemon to the target, that is something that's going to definitely be some huge mind games. And it seems situational, situational depending on kind of what Pokemon you're going up against. Um, but if it's some type of ability where you can grab boosts, this could be huge for being able to change both of your, you know, it's like an ability swap, but giving both of your Pokemon that on your side. Um, so this could be pretty overpowered. Doodle seems like something freaking only Smeargle could learn. Um, so maybe it's going to be a pretty small kind of um, pool of Pokemon that can learn this, but Doodle could be really cool for kind of like gimmick teams, which I'm all for. So Doodle's super cool. Um, and the last new move that we're going to talk about today, I'm sure there's more out there, but this is from just what I have uh, kind of seen talked about is called Chili Reception. So this user tells a chillingly bad joke before switching places with a party Pokemon in waiting. This summons a snowstorm lasting five turns. Um, so this move is a bit of a doozy. It tells a chillingly bad joke, which leads me to believe this is going to be a signature move of a certain like Jester, Joker type of Pokemon. Um, likely going to be an Ice type, obviously, which is super interesting. So not only is this basically a Baton Pass, it is essentially going to set up a Hailstorm slash Snowstorm as well. We're also going to talk about the changes to Hail or Snow. Um, but this is an interesting move that I can see being... I don't know if it's going to switch you, allow you to switch Pokemon with something you would like, or if it's basically like using Roar on yourself, which is something I could see it being like. It, it could bring out a random Pokemon rather than allowing you to choose what you switch with. Um, but this is huge for singles in that being able to, like, but it's basically Baton Pass, right? But gives you the Snowstorm. So on Hail Teams, this is going to be huge. Being able to get that pivot priority with something like they boosted Teleport recently, where if you're in on a Pokemon and you know that they're going to switch, you can just use Teleport. So they switch out first, you then Teleport, then you get, are able to bring in a matchup um, that benefits you. So this is a move that basically gives you that type of utility, but also summons a Snowstorm, which is insane. And speaking of Snowstorm, there is basically been a huge ice type buff that is going to change the way ice types play in general and that is that hail is actually being replaced by a weather condition called snowscape they're completely redoing hail which i think has needed it for a while all weather conditions um, have greater benefits and hail kind of was the one that was lacking so now uh hail or snowstorm actually boosts the defenses of ice type pokemon which is insane defensive uh, Ice-type Pokemon are going to get a huge buff at this. We see that with Sandstorm uh, boosting Rock-type's rock special defense. So I believe it's actually just going to boost physical defense of Ice-type Pokemon, where uh, you know Pokemon like that are lacking in general. 
Um, but it's great to see, you know, snow being able to get a little bit of a highlight here. I think this is something that's kind of needed a rework in the past, um, but that's going to definitely change the play style of ice types, which in general isn't a horrible uh, defensive type. I, I guess with a, with a defense boost, it's going to make it a lot better because a lot of those ice types are lacking in physical defense in the first place. Um, but super cool to see an ice type buff. So Pokemon being able to set up the snow with uh, snow warning abilities are going to be super important here. And also being able to pair that with Chili Reception, being able to kind of run a full snow team is super cool. Like I said, all other weather effects have had some type of other boost, whereas like fire types, um, you know, can increase fire type damage. Rain does the same for water type damage. Sandstorm gets a special defense boost. Cool to see Hail uh, kind of come out on top on that one. Now, the final thing we're going to talk about in today's video is one of the biggest changes to competitive Pokemon, in my opinion, and I don't know if it's deserved or not, but that is the nerf to abilities in general. So for starters, here's what we know for sure, 100%. That abilities like Contrary and Defiant have been nerfed to be single use only, meaning Pokemon like Superior in the past being able to spam uh, Leaf Storm, it was able to get as many, you know, special attack buffs as it wanted uh, with that contrary ability. Now, however, you're limited to using it only once per match. Now, a lot of people are also saying that that means that is going to carry over to all abilities being single use only. And it makes sense for moves like contrary and defiant to be able to only get that single boost. It does, I think, kind of level out the playing field a little bit. And this is certainly a nerf for Pokemon that kind of relied on moves like that in a gimmick type of way, but I think it does kind of uh, level things out nicely. But people are saying that this is gonna be universal. Like, like I mentioned, um, people are saying moves like Intimidate only can be used once upon switching in, which I personally don't believe, but here's what people are thinking. In Generation 8, the ability description is the Pokemon intimidates opposing Pokemon upon entering battle, lowering their attack stat, whereas in Gen 9, now it reads, when the Pokemon enters a battle, it intimidates opposing Pokemon, it makes them cower, lowering their attack stats. Now, people are thinking because it says specifically when the Pokemon enters a battle, meaning only once per battle, the Intimidate is going to be used. In my opinion, I think this is just kind of a wording difference that people are looking too far into. Um, I, I personally believe only certain abilities are going to be nerfed to be single use only. Um, but if this does change the way Intimidate works, that is going to change everything about VGC. Certain Pokemon uh, like Incineroar that rely on Intimidating and Fake Out, uh, not being able to have that utility with the Intimidate is going to be absolutely insane. So maybe this is just going to work like this for a few moves. It could be for all of them. However, in my opinion, I think it's just going to be for certain moves, that are, for certain abilities that kind of needed that nerf regardless. But let me know what you think. In general, thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know if you like discussion videos like this. I'm definitely happy to do more. Uh, this is something that, of course, I'm very interested in. And uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about how competitive is going to work in Scarlet and Violet. I personally am extremely excited, and there's going to be content for days on the channel. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.